My name is Edward Warfield. I'm the publisher of City Biz, and I'm honored today to interview Chio Hurley, who is the CEO and founder of THT Companies. Welcome, Chio. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for having me, Edwin. I appreciate it. Can you provide an introduction to THG Companies? Sure. Uh, THG Companies is a uh, Division 9, uh, which is Interiors, subcontractor, construction subcontractor, located here in Baltimore City. Um, we aim to provide highest quality service to our customers, uh, which are big commercial clients, but also give back to Baltimore at large by hiring locally uh, and just doing great jobs within the city and outside of the city uh, to try to help beautify Baltimore and help build it up. And can you provide an overview of the services that THG Company provides? Sure, absolutely. We provide uh, drywall, uh, flooring, uh, ceilings, most, most interior work uh, on large construction sites. We also have a robust uh, carpentry uh, outfit that goes all around, uh, not just Maryland, but the country, uh, doing jobs um, Help, helping to uh, do rough carpentry, and it's, it's given really given us a, a good opportunity to really hire locally and train locally, and uh, it's really helped us to grow our workforce. And you founded the company back in two thousand nine. Can you provide some of the key the key milestones over the last uh, decade, place plus years? Sure, sure. So I, I started the company uh, really as um, a real estate development firm, right? I, I was. Uh, Really into real estate development. I was working uh, for Far City New East Baltimore Partnership at the time uh, when I first uh, incorporated the company. So on the side, I, I was flipping houses, uh, working with some partners. And, and you know, the market crashed. Uh, one thing led to another. I had another job uh, running Park Heights Renaissance, but I still kept the business open. I was doing a lot of, of advisory. Uh, and then around um, the 2012-2013 two th time frame, uh, my partners uh, struck up a relationship with, with some other firms that helped to mentor us, uh, and we started doing drywall work. Our first client was uh, White & Turner, uh, a locally-based uh, business that uh, most people are very familiar with. And can you highlight some of your recent projects? Sure. Uh, right now, we're working at Johns Hopkins Hospital uh, doing a lot of carpentry and safety work. Uh, it's actually the biggest contract to date. We're working for White & Turner on that project, and... Uh, it's a three million plus contract, and it's our biggest contract to date. We're also working at Port Covington uh, with Clark Construction. We're doing uh, some interior work with some bathrooms. We're doing tile work. I have a, a laborer who's been working there for almost a year. Uh, we're doing some painting there. So we, we're really uh, expanding what we do and, and expanding our client base. So your expertise includes urban planning, development, and construction, and you had a number of positions that I'd love for you to walk us through. You were executive director of the Park Heights Renaissance uh, Real Estate Development. You were lead leasing manager for the Forest City uh, New East Baltimore Partnership. Uh, you also worked at Deloitte. Yeah, walk us through some of your career highlights and how that led to your becoming an entrepreneur. Sure. Well, I think it all start goes back to uh, uh, my education and upbringing here in Baltimore. Uh, we uh, discussed, I, I went to Gilman School uh, and, and there I kind of sparked the entrepreneurial bug uh, being around a lot of classmates who I knew their families owned business. And I was very curious about how their families did that, those created those businesses. Uh, so I was the kid in middle school reading Fortune and Business Week and understanding, trying to really get a, a good concept of how, how to go along and, and start my own business at some point. Uh, I went to Howard University where I was a finance major there. Uh, my, my eyes were kind of on Wall Street uh, I worked at Bank of New York for an internship during the summer, and uh, I, I had the choice of going to New York or uh, going to Michigan to work for General Motors, and I took General Motors. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty frugal guy. Uh, I, didn't, I, I couldn't afford New York rents, even, even with the, uh, my, my first year out of college salary. I didn't want to uh, – I, I, I was hesitant to, to do that. But uh, so, I, so initially, I was really in the accounting and finance uh, field, and around 2000, when I was uh, uh, finishing up my first master's degree at uh, American University, I took a course uh, that dealt with public fin finance. And uh, it really built, dealt with how, how cities build bridges, uh, they build things for public good. Uh, and I, the teacher and I hit it off, and he suggested, hey, maybe, maybe you want to get into real estate development. Um, and from there, the rest is history. Um, every position I took from that point on 
was kind of geared for me to start learning and understanding more about real estate and real estate development. And then from there, we jumped off into the construction piece. I mean, when I started the company, I, I took myself all the way back to school. I mean, I, I was receiving my second master's at, at Johns Hopkins uh, in real estate, but I also was taking uh, uh, community college uh, classes at Anne Arundel Community College because they have a construction uh, major pretty much uh, for credit. Uh, so I was learning my, te teaching myself how to do estimating, et cetera. Uh, so it's great. I, I'm, I'm a person who's into constantly uh, educating himself and trying to learn as much as possible so I can do a good job. And as part of that education, you attended the Clark Construction Strategic Partnership. Can you tell us about that program and its impact on your business? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Clark Construction's uh, Strategic Partnership Program is great. It's almost like a compressed MBA focused on the construction industry. Uh, it's a nine-month course. Every week you drive to Bethesda, uh, this is pre-COVID, uh, and, and go through classes where you learn about bonding, safety, uh, accounting for uh, your, your firm, um, just a plethora of, of things to learn about the construction industry. And it, it's all taught by industry professionals and it's sponsored by Clark. So you deal, we work with a lot of individuals uh, from Clark. Uh, that ended up turning out to be one of the greatest uh, opportunities that happened for me uh, because my team, uh, at the end you do a capstone project and my team, we won our capstone and that really put my, my firm at the uh in the eyes and the sights of uh, Clark Construction. And so it's helped me grow my business. I have a great relationship with the Baltimore office here. And I've actually uh, struck up a friendship with uh, Clark's president, Robbie Moser, uh, who's really helping uh, to, to mentor me uh, and, and helping and his team is helping me as well. So it's been a great uh, shot in the arm for my company and I, I feel very fortunate. You're a graduate of Gilman School. You were past president of the school's alumni board of governors, as, as well as as well as a current member of the Gilman Board of Trustees. You've also served on the boards of the Baltimore Education Scholarship Trust and WYPR Radio. Tell us about some of your board involvement and the ones that you're most engaged with. So, Edwin, outside of uh, a deep love for the city and wanting to really build the city up through my business, through employment, um, education is really key for me. Education and, and, and YPR, uh, even that really ties to education and educating people about what's going on in our city. But I just really believe in the strength of uh, being educated, getting a great education wherever you go. Uh, my mom was a school teacher. My grandmother was a school teacher. My aunt and uncle, they were school teachers. I grew up with a lot of uh, teachers in my family. Um, and I just, you know, I really saw my life kind of transformed through education. Uh, and so sitting on the best board, um, sitting on Gilman's board, it's all focused on helping to uh, push forward a new generation of thinkers, uh, a new generation of students who can help change the world, kind of end uh, a lot of this madness that's going on in the world today that we see. Uh, more importantly, as African-American, you know, I, I want to see uh, young African-Americans thrive in Baltimore City. Usually the narrative is not that. And I know through education, um, we can change that narrative. Uh, and it really, it has to start young, right? You have to start early. Uh, early childhood uh, education is very, very important. And so, you know, as a Baltimorean and, and all of us in this region, we really have to be focused on uh, education. And I'm just trying to do my part uh, to, to help others. Thank you for sharing that. So what are the growth plans for THG companies? We want to grow our, our business uh uh, I won't say the number, <laughs> or maybe I will, but we want to we want to grow uh, 10 to 15 percent per year, year over year. Uh, I want to expand my workforce uh, where I continue to hire uh, city residents, uh, give them you know, training opportunities. I, I would love to see my my uh, company swell to, you know, just on the uh, the field side, over 100 uh, city residents, if, if possible. Um, I think we can do it. I think there's enough work out there. Uh, there's definitely a dearth of skill in the uh, skilled trades that uh, I wish that more people would be interested in learning how to be carpenters or masons or whatever, right? Like that, because uh, there's a ton of opportunity. And so that also goes back to education. So that, that's where I see, see my firm uh, just, just continuing to grow and to, to expand throughout Baltimore. Uh, so I would say, you know, over, you know, uh, 50 to 100 employees and, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> X amount of millions of dollars a year. <laughs> Any part of the Chio Hurley story or the THG company's story that we haven't that you haven't shared with us that you'd like to share with our readers? 
for me, it, it wasn't a conventional route into construction, right? Um, people would look at on the face of it and say, hey, you know, how, how did this, this person uh, get into the construction field? Uh, but like I said before, it really took a lot of time, effort, and education. Uh, I'm a person who uh, has benefited from a lot of mentors in the industry, uh, and I also listen, right? I listen to what, what good mentors tell me, and I follow their lead. Um, it does me no good to, like, uh, just just take their uh, advice and not listen to it, uh, especially those who have come before me who have been successful in the business. And so that's that's really what I, I like to highlight to others is that it, it, it's no easy overnight successes. Um, we've been a, we've grown this business. It's taken years to do this, uh, uh, you know, while raising a family and working and being on boards, et cetera. It, it's taken a lot of blood, sweat and tears, a lot of sleepless nights and there's still sleepless nights. Right. But um you know, I know that the greater good will, will be worth it in the end. So um, that's that's who we are. That's who I am. Uh, and our firm and the folks that work for us are in lockstep with that. We all want to do good for Baltimore. We want to do good for our clients. And we want to just grow and build a great company out of Baltimore. We want to be we want to make Baltimore proud. And that's what THG is. So, T, I I want to thank you for sharing your story and keep us surprised as you move forward. And once you read some of your milestones of employees and revenue metrics. Get, re, please reach out to us again and we'll have an update on your story. Thank you, Gio. Absolutely. Thank you.